nearly all men can stand adversity. But if you want to test a man's character, give him power. The great Abraham Lincoln. It's courtesy of uh, Jason Theobald. He contributed to the quotes today. We are against the grain. Myself, Jeff Black. We got Jason Theobald. We got Jason Roberson, better known as Robo, on the thing today. But we have our good friend Matt, aka the movie cynic from YouTube Land. If you guys have never seen his stuff on YouTube, it's the funniest shit you guys will ever watch. But uh, besides the little anime porn that's thrown in there occasionally, which is inside check. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, we're going to kick it off with how our last seven days have been. But the, the point of today's episode is Matt is in that 0.0001% God number of people who took a YouTube channel and scaled it to 100,000 people uh, in the short amount of time. And we're going to get into that, how he monetizes it, the whole nine yards, and nice. really kind of walk away with how you can make a YouTube channel successful and how you can make a YouTube channel suck like mine did. But with that being said, the old... Scoob, what? how's the last seven days been? I smoked this joint. Oh, uh, you know, not much different from last week. Uh, things are good business wise for sure. Uh, Scooby Health is, is killing it. Um, let's see, anything exciting? Well, next week I travel to Colorado. I'll be doing some zip lining in the mountains and whitewater rafting. Um, oh, breaks. This is the, uh, <laughs> I'll be fine. This is the, uh, it'll for the real man show. It's going to be a, uh, it's like a little um, show that'll be on like one of the streaming, you know, there's so many damn streamers this day and I'm not sure exactly where this one is streaming, but um, it's a little spot for like advanced vitality um, HRT. So it's a little, little advertising piece and they uh, will be having this show. So they're going to record us doing these things. Um, so it should be fun. Um, I do that Wednesday through Friday back in town quickly to get Maddox. And um, yeah, so I think that's probably the biggest thing. Uh, my other announcement is that, you know, um, Scooby U, we have our introduction to a functional nutrition course launching October 16th. Uh, there are still spots open, but um, not a ton. So if you're interested, uh, Jason, that's Scooby Health, ScoobyPrep.com. Yeah, you'll get the courtesy of me being in there too, because me and a couple of my teammates yep. are in there. I can't wait to harass you with a bunch of useless questions and answers to piss you off. It's gonna be nice to see how frustrated I can make you. But I'm glad you're gonna go zip lining. I have a question. Yeah, do you, do you have a parachute on a zip line? I don't know. I've no. never done it. Guy with brittle bones. No, like you're uh, you know, it's one one, you know, it's tied up to tree to tree at an angle. You're in a harness, you hook in with your carabiner and you just slide down. Well, I hope it doesn't break. I'm glad you've been on a diet for the last few weeks. <laughs> I've done it before. It's 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 a good amount of fun. Well, good. I'm glad you're stepping out and doing stuff at an age that's very dangerous. I think that's <laughs> nice. Uh, Robo, how's your last seven days been? You had to brush up with security. You had to like throw down a little gauntlet, a little talk a little shit and everything else over the weekend. So how'd that go? Not exactly. Oh, um, fair. Apparently, Bucky's doesn't like if you film something in their parking lot uh really? yeah it doesn't go well managers run out um but at the end of the day it wasn't a big deal that was just on a road trip to atlanta um beyond that man just crazy busy with work uh businesses are still selling people still want to buy businesses so every fear we have about the economy uh it doesn't matter um everyone's still spending money so until that stops we're going to keep chugging along going to give you a little advice having run some ropes courses in my younger days though jeff if you zip line keep all the furniture in the front room think about that for a second you'll figure it out that's all you need to know yeah you're an asshole uh, that's yeah. all i gotta say mm, dick but um anyway my last seven days have been super exciting um we went to go see uh more uh Leanne Morgan, that comedian at the Ryman last week, uh, Tristan, who Jason and I know, uh, got me tickets, got to meet her in person. So that was super cool. Uh, spent the weekend relaxing ahead of the guy's trip this weekend. So that way I can make sure I was fully rested for this experience. Um, let's see. And then, uh, I got asked to maybe be a board member for the chamber of commerce for the under 45 group, which is very <laughs> shocking. Uh, they thought I was liberal, which I just died laughing when they thought that <laughs> I was like, I was like, why? Just because I like openly like drugs and I don't give a shit if gays get married. <laughs> Who the fuck cares? You know, but I guess that made me liberal enough. But um, the other thing is my ass is growing and it's weird when it hits my hamstrings now when I walk. 
So I can't wait for Jason to get a real assessment of it this week when I send him my pictures. Awesome. I'm probably gonna yeah, get like a yeah, thong. Me yeah, I can't. <laughs> Ooh, I, especially because I get him early in the morning. He's like, "Yep, looks good. Yep, mm-hmm. yep. All right, give me more food. Yep, lots of yeps in there." But um, other than that, let's see. Oh, Matt, before I get to you, Mister Movie Cynic, mm-hmm. me and Jason have decided, <clears throat> Scooby, that we are going to do a free seminar. In Nashville, Tennessee, early 2024 at my gym. It's going to be 100 spots. Myself, Jason, Robo. I might convince Matt to do a high deep dive on on YouTube, but it's just going to be a free seminar for us to just get back and help a lot of people out there because you guys have helped us and see how that kind of goes. So look for more details about that. We're currently talking to some coaches to see that we can pull together. And what we'll do is shut down Iron House for the day. And have a hell of a party. And then we'll go out on the town. But we will not go honky-tonking. We will not do that. We will go to other places that are more exciting than Honky Tonk Nashville. Ugh. But anyway, that being said, Mr. Movie Cynic, how's your last seven days been? Anything exciting in the world of YouTube land? Uh, nothing in YouTube because I haven't really worked uh, in the past seven days. <laughs> That's um, nice. It yeah, is, dude, it's it is nice so to nice. have that option. Oh, I hate him for it. When he talks about it, I'm like, shut the fuck up. Like, well, to be fair, I do have a time crunch now and I have to get two videos done in the next nine days. So that's going to be, and oh, that's a big ask thing. that I have to do. Um, but other than that, I went to a WWE show. That was a lot of fun. They're um, amazing live, aren't they? Yeah, that was super fun. Um, but other than that, really just relaxing and yeah, enjoying the fact that I can <laughs> relax. So I have a question. Let's just get into this. You're from Maine. Everyone thinks Maine people are yuppies, but you're not. You're actually cool. What <laughs> what went down this path for you to kind of just say like, fuck it, I'm going to go into YouTube because it's extremely competitive from what I understand. It is one of the hardest ways to grow a brand from what I understand. So what made you, what, what kind of hit this point in your life? You're like, fuck it. I'm going to go all in on this one thing. And what were you kind of doing before? And what's your background? And tell us a little bit about you before we start peppering you with unnecessary questions. Yeah. YouTube seems to be like the, um, the tail end of a long journey. Like throughout my entire life, I always wanted to do something artistic and, uh, YouTube's incredibly challenging when it comes to, um, I don't know, you have to be your own boss or you have to be an entrepreneur, but um, if you're going to make the content yourself, which I do, uh, you have to be really creative. And that's what I've been my whole life. I've always hated nine to five jobs. Um, I was able to hold like one nine to five job for like six or seven years. It was like the longest before I had to switch it up because um, I just get bored. And um, I've been a musician almost my entire life and a comic book artist and a comic book writer. Like I'm obsessed. I have, there's some comic books even behind me. Um, and I got a comic book published, uh, my own, uh, I wrote it, I drew it, I did everything and, uh, like unsolicitedly sent it to a ton of publishers. And one of them got back to me and said, yes. Um, and then this was like right before COVID. And, uh, during COVID I had never opened YouTube in my life. Um, but I was just, yeah, but I was, uh, you know, on unemployment from my regular job, just sitting at home. And so one day I just decided to go on YouTube, uh, cause my roommate was always on YouTube and I had no idea what to look up, but you know, I'm a comic book fan. I'm a movie fan, uh, like a movie aficionado. Like I love, I'm a cinephile for sure. And, uh, when superhero movies took off, you know, 15 ish years ago, that was like a mix of my two favorite things. Um, so I finally could see superheroes in movies. And, uh, so that's what I looked up on YouTube was just like, I loved making ofs and everything that you got on DVDs when I was younger. Um, and so I just fell down this rabbit hole of like, they're called video essays where you're just essentially writing, you know, you're making a video essay, uh, making an, uh, you know, an argument or a point, um, about a movie or, a, you know, whatever good or bad. And, um, I started watching a couple people in particular really intensely and just watched like every video that they had made. And, um, I realized they were doing it for a living and I was like, well, I don't know, I can probably, contribute like I probably have something to say 
but I had never done video editing. So I, um, like three or four months for my first video, I started writing a script and it was for like the latest matrix movie, which I absolutely hated. And I'm a huge <laughs> matrix fan. So it was like, it was a catalyst to try and make my first video because I, um, had such strong opinions on this one. And uh, I wrote a script. Um, it wasn't finished, but I practiced video editing for like, I made a three or four minute video. And I was just like showing my friends and sending it to people and just asking what they thought. Um, because all the advice I had started learning from YouTube was like, hey, just make videos, just put videos out. But uh, what I've always noticed as an artist in any field is just like, don't show your project until it's done because no one else gets it. No one else sees what you're doing. Like if um, Jeff, if you're a musician, have you ever written something and gone to show someone and they just don't have the reaction you have because you hear the finished product in your head? It's like that. Um, so I use that as just like the catalyst to, to practice. And then my first video I ever ended up posting was, wasn't even about that movie. It was on uh, the Batman movie that came out. Um, and that video got over a hundred thousand views and no, wow. it was my first video. And Shit. it was because I like just really prepped before I did the first thing. And then they also allow you to do a lot of changes, uh, post upload too. So like it wasn't perfect off the bat, but the little things like how to get someone's attention with the thumbnail and the title and all that, you can alter that stuff. Um, so I didn't know instantly what to do, but I had a pretty good, uh, trajectory. And then I just, um, I don't know, I, I became obsessed with YouTube. So I just learned really fast. I just like, I would sit around all day and just either I'm working on a video or learning about YouTube itself, not just how to make good content. Cause I felt I already had a good feel for that, but yeah. And, um, I posted my first video in March of last year and I could have quit my job and gone full-time three months later. Um, I didn't for until December of last year. Um, but, uh, that's how quickly things changed. Like uh, my life is a complete 180 from what it was a year ago. It's insane. Well, wow. Robo, cool. you get to fire it off, man. Yeah. So generally when you hear someone say, I'm going to go make a YouTube channel, your reaction is, ha ha, you know, fuck off. You know, that's a terrible idea. Don't quit your day job. Yeah. Um, what do you think made the difference for you going after it versus the regular person who just posts some videos, doesn't see any traction, doesn't move on? What was that commitment? For? Um, well, I've I have this attitude that's just followed me my entire life, especially as uh, as an artistic person. You hear that a lot. <laughs> and especially like ever since I was a little kid, I was hearing like, um, you know, that's a pipe dream. Like that's mm -hmm. not possible. Uh, well, the cool thing is, is technology is caught up with those kids that might have a lot of talent, but don't know, like you can't, you know, there's probably a lot of luck involved in getting into Hollywood and becoming an actor and all that stuff. Well, the cool thing is, is nowadays on YouTube, if you are really talented and have the drive, I think the YouTube algorithm is the most fair thing on the planet that's ever existed to be able to that's um that's a fair starting point for everybody it doesn't care about anything about you except did you make a good video that people want to watch because it youtube wants to make money so you make money by making youtube money and um you know i think that's the difference is like uh, experiencing like pre YouTube and always hearing like, Oh, that's never going to happen for you. Like, you're not gonna, you know, do this or that for a job. There's no way you can be an artist or have that be a career. Um, and I don't know, I've just heard it so many times that like, I didn't, I, whenever I mentioned to someone during that few month period, like, Hey, I'm starting a YouTube channel. I knew what they were thinking. Like, Oh, <laughs> haha. Good luck with that. But I have a fuck you attitude. That's just like, yeah, and I'm going to show you. <laughs> we don't cuss I, I, on this show. 
No, I'm, I'm just kidding. I was going to say, oh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, we don't give a fuck. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but no, that's, uh, I don't know. You just have to have an, and I, I, like when I give people advice that want to become like a musician or a comic book artist and stuff, I'm just like, well, just be honest with yourself first because everyone's going to tell you no, like that's impossible. But um, are you actually talented at what you do? Well, if you are, then the, you know, the rest is just a lot of hard work and then capitalizing on luck uh, with YouTube. I, I don't think any luck's involved. I, uh, because the algorithm gives every video a chance, like eventually your video, even if you have zero subscribers, the algorithm will give it a chance. And, uh, it's up to you from there to capitalize on the chance it gives you. So what do you mean? The algorithm is the fairest and why do you arrive at that? Like, because Instagram where Jason and I live, Scoob and I is the most unfair algorithm and sucks. You know, you could have the greatest thing, but if you're not showing your ass or doing dances or things like that, it usually just kicks you out. Yeah. Why do you say that YouTube is? And did you feel like that was a competitive edge that most people weren't seeing when you were looking at the field? Um, I think it's fair because it, uh, you know, whatever people say about, you know, the rules you have to follow, the terms and conditions, you always hear people complaining about that, but um, it doesn't care about your political affiliation. It really doesn't. Um, unless you're like really doing extreme stuff, but I, you know, I'm doing movie reviews that have slight political commentary in them. And, you know, I make political jokes. Um, and so it, it would be construed as probably more center, uh, center or right leaning, but and, and so you hear a lot about people complaining about shadow banning on certain platforms. Well, there's no way that happens on YouTube as far as I know. Like none of that stuff happens. And um, because Google owns YouTube and Google loves money. And <laughs> if you're going to make if you're going to make Google money, that's honestly all it cares about. And so that's all YouTube cares about. And so that's all YouTube's algorithm cares about. So if you're within their terms and conditions in your video and not doing anything or saying anything or showing any nudity or anything like that. Um, it's going to give you just as fair a shot because it, it wants to find the right audience. And, you know, for me, there's an audience for movie critiques. So, um, then it's, it's, it's going to give me a shot. Like if you, if I do a Thor review, like uh, at, at some, it, the algorithm needs to recognize like what kind of video it is or what it's about, right? So it knows how to attempt to start finding an audience for it. Well, it'll know what my video is. It's a Thor review. Well, okay, it's going to give it a shot. The rest is up to me. Did I make a good enough title? Did I make a good enough thumbnail? Is the video good enough to keep people's attention after they click on it? That's not up to YouTube. That's up to me. YouTube did its job. It like showed it to 15,000 people. And like if 200 people clicked on it, you didn't do a good enough job. YouTube didn't do a bad job. You did. Um, so it it's a platform that completely rewards uh, people that are talented. And you have to be talented in multiple facets. That's why there's some usually a team behind people. Um, but it will give you just as fair a shot as anybody else and it doesn't matter if you're right or left because there are right and left audiences on youtube so it'll it'll find them but yeah i don't know if that answers your question but no it helps really know, break yeah. it out it just seems like yeah. that they're just capitalistic to the core and i like that yeah i mean it's it's completely i mean that's what fairness is it's just it doesn't care what your affiliation is in any shape or form. <laughs> it's pure capitalism. Yeah. Jay, do you have any questions? Yeah. Go for it. Yeah. I mean, let's talk about money. Um, so <laughs> like, how does it flow? I'm not even sure. I, I assume uh, I have barely any presence on you, YouTube. Sure. Uh, I'm horrific with tech. Um, so how does the money flow? Like you have a hundred thousand followers. Great. How does that make them money? And like, is it just the ads and the amount of people that watch your shit? What if people click through it? What if they don't watch it, the ad the whole time? How do these ads and things that they're selling, 
how do you get paid? And then how do you make them money? Get, give us the whole trickle down because I don't know that I fully understand it. Sure. So uh, they pay out once a month and okay. it's from the first, the 30th is what it will pay out. Like, uh, So I get paid on the 21st of every month from Google AdSense. Okay. And um, I can choose to turn on monetization for every video. And on every video, you can select what kind of advertisements that they will show. And there are like six or seven different kinds, like the okay. little bumper ads, non-skippable 20 second ads, skippable 10 second ads, like all you, you can just turn them all on. Um, and uh, it pays you by what's called click per mile or CPM. And a yeah. mile is 1000 views. So every 1000 views, an advertiser has to pay YouTube, let's say $20. Well, I'll make like nine or $10 of that. And so for every 1000 views on that video, I'll make nine or $10 and it fluctuates every day. Um, uh, almost like, uh, Oh, I don't know. Like it, you know, it might be like 963. I get paid one day and the next day it's like 865 for whatever purpose. And then it might skyrocket to like $12, but it averages out to like nine a video. Um, and uh, that's, so that's the AdSense money that they pay out once a month and it's totaled. And you can see exactly every video has a breakdown of like what percentage and how much money every type of advertisement made you. Okay. Um, so besides the ads, um, I also have sponsors because I have an agency. Um, I have an agent that works for me that gets me sponsorships and I try and put a sponsorship in every video and those okay. pay also by a CPM or for every 1000 views and okay. that price out varies. Okay. Um, so, but like an average is like, if you guarantee them 250,000 views, they'll pay you like $6,000. Okay. Um, you can negotiate. So like if I had a sure. million subscribers and I was getting like a million views of video, I would, you know, jack yeah, up yeah. the negotiations for sure. Um, and, and they also have like low risk ones where it's like no view guarantee and we'll pay you like, you know, two grand or whatever. Um, but I try and have a sponsorship in every video and uh, the advertisers pay google also by so let's say you make a video that's only four minutes long okay. well advertisers uh have less space to work with essentially because there's less video so okay. they'll pay a lower rate so they might only pay like two dollars well i have another youtube friend who makes four hour video breakdowns so he makes like you know two or three times more than me for every video he makes, but it's because I make 20 minute videos and he makes like four hour videos. Wow. God, damn. Yeah. I don't even think someone would watch that for four hours. Oh, there know. is though. And that's the thing. <laughs> they're, they're repeat customers because like, uh, like I watch a person who does, he only makes like one video a year, but it's like a six hour breakdown of a movie and I'll watch it, but I'll have to come back to it like 20 times. And every day I come back as a new click. Oh. Yeah. oh, wow. Have you started longer videos or it's just not your thing? Um, I have a couple of videos that are about an hour. And okay. I and what's crazy are those longer videos in my niche anyway, are like evergreen videos. So because of their length, like here, let me break this down. So how an impression works, which is when a person just sees your thumbnail, Mm -hmm. um the algorithm doesn't just like offer those up willy-nilly because that's screen space and so um if a uh what's called a uh click-through rate which is ctr um that's how many people what's the percentage of people that click for every 100 views so or for every 100 impressions and so if that's really low it it won't show your video because it's like, well, no one's clicking on this. So we don't want to keep showing it to people because it's just taking up, like just fill that spot with a video that's performing better. Um, 
But the thing is, you can offset that if your video's watch time is super long. And watch like watch time means that someone's on the YouTube app. So YouTube loves that the most. So like even if I have a video that only has like a low uh, click through rate of like 2%, if people that do click on it, watch it for 30 minutes, that video is going to be called an evergreen video because it's just going to forever get me views. Because like YouTube loves it because someone will click on it and sit there for a half hour and watch it. Got it. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's all kinds of uh, intricate stuff that you, that you have no, to I mean, balance. That, that, does, that does help me though. I didn't, I didn't really know how that broke down. So that's good. That's yeah. Appreciate. So have you, sorry, have, Jeff. No, you yeah. Have. Have, have you found that it's better to script videos um, versus do them ad lib and also, is there a, a specific time frame that you've had the most success with, you know, a five minute, 10 minute, 20 minute video? Yeah. So my best performing video is an hour long, but I can't make those like, I, I can't make those. Well, first of all, it's like super time consuming. Um, like an hour long video would take me, you know, more like a month. Um, okay. But the sweet spot I found is like 20 minute videos. Um mm -hmm the and there's really no right or wrong answer to how long to make a video it's more of just like once you're uh like say you make a five minute video and once it once it catches on um the algorithm's going to want you to make more five minute videos like uh it longer is better because that means like you know more average watch time but um but uh like now that I make 20 minute videos, the, if I make a five minute video, the algorithm will interpret that as that video underperforming compared to the rest of my other ones, because my other mm. ones are like 20 minutes. So it'll like stop showing that video to people. It's kind of dumb in that, Wait, in that when way. You say an hour, or it'll take a month to make an hour video. Um, is that like working a 40 hour work week? Is that taking some time off? Is that, and then why is it that it takes that much time? Um, because, uh, well, to answer your question too, Robo, like I do script my videos and I prefer, I prefer that. And mm -hmm. um, because you need to, I, I don't know, I've, I've, I found like that's, that's the way to be able to control the entertainment value of it. Um, AdLib gets it out faster, but I feel like, uh, what works in my videos is that I say exactly what I want to say, like nothing's, you know, there's no fat on any of my videos. It's all, mm -hmm. it's all me. You know what I mean? Um, so it, yeah, scripting is kind of the way to go, but it's really like, that's just my, you know, that's my niche though. Not all niches yeah. are the same. Yeah. yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. And Jason, you had a question. Yeah, I just I just wanted to know how many hours goes into making, a, say, a twenty minute video, and how many hours goes into making a one hour video. Right, right. Um, yeah, the scripting process takes the longest. I would say. Okay. Um, I think that's that's kind of the double edged sword. Is like I can control the entertainment value of it, um, and control every facet of the video, but it takes me forever to come up with that stuff. Like I'm not. Uh, I don't know there was some famous writer who said like 90% of the time you spend writing is procrastinating. And that's kind of true. true. And it, it really is because you're just sitting there staring at the screen. Like I don't just uh, like, okay, I'm going to write now and I need to write 5,000 words and I just pour out 5,000 words. Like, um, you know, an hour long video is probably a 15,000 word script. That's going to take me 30 hours easy to write, you know? Um, and, uh, you know, that might be sitting around, uh, but that's just the nature of writing for a lot of people and for me in particular. Uh, and then the video editing process, it takes like, it can take up to an hour to edit one minute of video. Oh, wow. So there's, you know, if it's an hour video, there's 60 hours right there. Wow. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you kind of take the approach you're creative and you're the director, you know, you're not just getting on yeah. there. Obviously uh, I looked at the page obviously, and I, I see what you're doing and, you know, 
uh, but you're you're taking more of the creative aspect of this and it's almost like you're a little mini director creating shorts basically yeah 100 percent. i don't see it as content creation I, it's an art form yeah and um it's it's like making a video is everything that i've been doing creatively like all rolled into one it's like okay. you know uh graphic design with the thumbnails and writing my scripts and actually you know uh, doing narrating is fun. And uh, yeah, it's, I don't know. It just encompasses oh, everything yeah. that oh, I was already cool. doing. So it's a different way that I've never thought of. Um, you know, I always, I'm just from the bodybuilding world. I watch a few people in there. There's, you know, they just start, you know, it's not like, it, at least it doesn't seem from a script. There's no create creative to it. So uh, that's, that's cool. It's a different way to think about it. I like it. Do you think that the reason you look at it that way is why you're more successful than others who begin a YouTube channel? Yeah, because I think like if I go back to my first video, I think it's a little cringy, but it still holds <laughs> up. And, uh, you know, that just speaks to how prepared I was and how it was almost like, um, I don't know, like I still am going to do my uh, my comic book and finish that. And I want that to be successful, but it's almost like YouTube was my calling. <laughs> it's like... Um, uh, like I was saying a minute ago, it's just like everything that I was already doing and all rolled into one. It's like it all culminated into doing this. And so, you know, not a lot of people can say their first video was like a good one. So, um, you know, I was able to hit the ground running and not a lot of people can. So how many hours did you have to research to be able to do that? I mean, I mean, I wouldn't know jack shit about editing a video right now. So I don't know. Like, what did you read? Did you get on YouTube and click in how to edit a video? Or I mean, did you read a book? Like, how do you prepare yourself if someone out there wants to try your angle at this? Um, I do everything. I've ne I hate being taught anything. Uh, I like taking the long way. I just like the journey. You know what I mean? So like uh, with a video editor, it's just like with everything I've ever done. I've never taken a guitar lesson. I've never wow. done anything. I've always yeah. just the watched people play and then like, you know, just try and yeah. mimic what I'm seeing. And so uh, with a video editor, I just downloaded one and uh, started um, speaking of the Matrix sequels. Uh, part two and three are not too bad. Uh, they get a bad rep and there's one good movie in there somewhere. And so I used that as a guinea pig in the video editor to try and like edit that movie, those two movies into one movie uh, <laughs> and use that to practice and stuff. Okay. And um, then when the fourth Matrix movie came out, I wrote like a thousand word script or whatever and uh, got into the video editor and made my first practice run. Now, I didn't like read anything or I don't, I don't even think I watched, watched any YouTube videos. <laughs> just got <Wow>. in there <laughs> yeah yeah okay so how do you script what's your process for that because i know after talking to steven pressfield every writer has got their own way of handling it mm. but if you're looking just to start a baseline youtube channel you're like hey i want to make it sound good want to make it flow what are the recommendations you have for people to like script it out is there anything you would say do this but avoid this in terms of the writing um yeah, you are writing. So just remember that you can cut out things. Um, uh, writers, authors call it kill your darlings. Uh, so yeah. even it, just try and make a good video and put yourself in the shoes of uh, the viewer. And you don't want to be bored. Um, this person doesn't owe you their time. So don't treat the video like they do. And that all starts in the scripting process. So, so make sure your script's tight, say exactly what you mean to say, get to the point. Um, if you got someone to click on your video, you promise them something in the title and they expect you to deliver on it. So deliver on it and do it fast and uh, if it takes you, you know, if it's a 15 minute video and to get your point across, make the 15 minute video, but assure them up front that they're going to get what they, what you promised them when you clicked on them. You know, it's like customer service. You know, you gotta, you're, you sold the product, make sure the product's good when they get it in their hands. And so when they're viewing it, make sure the product's good.
Yeah, I know when we went over YouTube stuff together and you were showing videos and we were looking at me, you're like, this is awful because of blah, blah, blah. This is yeah. good because <laughs> of blah. Like you had a really good lens to that stuff. If I'm looking to build a YouTube channel, we'll say for, I don't know, health and fitness or maybe selling money or selling businesses or anything in between, where would you tell people to start looking and start practicing? Do they need fancy video equipment? Do they need all that shit? Or is it just an iPhone and, and so forth? Like, what's the barrier to entry, I guess, would be the better question to do. A well, it, it depends on your niche completely. Like, what are your goals? Um, if you... Uh, if you want to make a YouTube channel, you probably have a favorite YouTube channel and you probably have an idea of what kind of YouTube channel you want. And it's probably going to be similar to your favorite YouTube channel. Um, no one, uh, you know, 99.9% .9 of people aren't like, like the most, you know, only 0.1% of people are the most creative people on earth and come up with a whole new genre and come up with something completely different. Like you're probably inspired by somebody and want to join that club. And that's cool. And most people are there. I was there for sure. And so uh, that's how you estimate like, well, that's the bar then, you know, this person is the bar and in that niche that I'm trying to be in. And what do you need to compete with that? Um, like if you're watching a talking head video, they probably have a really nice camera. So you're Honestly, yeah, you're probably going to want a really nice camera, but you don't need to start there to practice and practice is, you know, massively key. If I had just published that first matrix video that I ever did, like, you know, I, who knows where my, you know, encouragement or discouragement might've gone. Um, I wanted to practice first. And so you don't need a super expensive camera to start practicing because, you know, if there is a thing where you need to buy equipment, well, you need to be good on camera and you can buy a cheapo one and practice that way because being good on camera is going to be hyper important too. Um, and if you're doing like video essays like me, the only barrier to entry is a microphone. Mm -hmm. Like I was, uh, I edited on my channel for an entire year on just an iPad. Yeah. I remember you telling me that. Yeah. Yeah. And so the microphone was like a hundred bucks and then there we go. <laughs> robo you got anything or scoob you guys want to throw some stuff yeah um so i'm i'm not asking you to throw jeff under the bus but i know you you the bus. different youtube channels critiqued them what are those easy mistakes or, or easy issues that you see a lot of people make um that you know you would recommend or can make recommendations right up front when you start do this do this avoid this oh let me go first robo for 200 you make it sound so fucking smart that people tune out within 30 seconds yeah am i right matt <laughs> just that is a thing that is a thing uh because i was gonna say yeah the uh probably the number one thing is uh getting to the point um yeah i think people overestimate how interesting they are uh and the thing is like maybe not in person that's totally different but i'm watching a youtube video you need to be interesting because you're competing with everyone that's on youtube and there's a lot mm -hmm. uh and there are a lot of interesting people so like you need to think of that when you're going into doing this it's like like getting to the point is so key and, and being interesting is, uh, you know, factor number two. Um, so like get to the point in an interesting way. Uh, like there's <laughs> no other way around it. <laughs> wow. And so I take it that scripting is an important part of that where you, you know, people who speak off the cuff are rarely that entertaining um, they just tend to ramble at a certain point. And so that scripting hones in some sort of interesting aspect, amplifies it almost. Yeah. And like whatever niche you're doing, just basically planning, you know, a script yeah. is a plan. I'm planning what I'm going to say when I, when I do my narration. Um, but you know, whatever niche you're doing, just plan ahead. Um, and just, I, I think a lot of people have a hard time being honest with themselves uh, even though they know the truth, like anytime in my uh, artistic life ever uh, that I've brought something to someone to get their critique, 
um, when I've gotten negative feedback, I already knew it like in my yeah, heart, you true. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, so it's, uh, and I was just hoping they didn't see it. And so just being honest with yourself and, uh, having those thoughts come forward and just be like, well, that's not good enough. Like I need to do better here. Uh, that'll, you know, a, a lot of people will be better off, uh, being like that. Re well, regardless of doing YouTube or not, but yeah. Yeah. Dude, what do you got? <clears throat> well, um, I think one thing I was curious about is, so if your clicks per mile is a thousand views, can you set something? I mean, you could have 2000 followers and technically do they allow you to still make money or do you have to hit like 10,000 and 20, do you have to hit like a certain threshold before you can set up to make cash? Or can you start as soon as you have at least a thousand views coming in? No. Uh, so the barrier to entry for monetization is a thousand subscribers and okay. 4,000 watch hours. Okay. Got it. Yep. Yeah. Figure there was and then, some. and then it's, it, it, then you're fine. You're good to go. Got it. So it's not a huge barrier, but you have to at least have a thousand to potentially get a, a CPM. It seems like. Yeah. Okay. Got it. And then do you know, like, like my, my son, he watches, it's on in the background, very low Kalis, like, you know, it's a video game guy. I mean, these guys with millions and millions of followers, I mean, is the money 50, 60 K a month? Is it a hundred K? Where do you, where is these, where oh, are those? So my question, you fuck bag. <laughs> <laughs> um, like it, you don't need subscribers. Is just a, uh, like they have utility, but it's just a vanity number at this point. The okay. real thing that gets you paid is views whether okay. that's from the actual ads that YouTube uh, sells or it's, uh, you know, your sponsorship that you put in your video too. Like at, what they're going to be paying you is based on views as well. Got it. Um, so subscribers are just, yeah, they're just vanity numbers. Um, but the thing is, is like the one bit of utility they have is like an instant audience that, the algorithm will show one of your videos too. Um, so like that's where they come in handy. So if you have like 5 million subscribers, yeah, you're instantly going to get like a minimum, probably like 500,000 views or something, you know? Um, and in the 500,000 view video, you could make, you know, depending on the length, you could make, um, you know, a couple grand off the AdSense and then, depending on how thrifty your agent is, maybe you get made 10 grand on a sponsorship in the video too. So, you know, whatever your 15, 20 minute video and you post every day and you just made like, you know, whatever, 12 grand off that video, uh, the money can be pretty damn good. Mm. Yeah. What is some pitfalls that you would say to avoid right out of the gate that you had to learn the hard way that probably cost you money? Ooh, that cost me money. Um, like something you like literally punt yourself in the balls over. Like, I wish I'd never done that. Um, I don't know uh, because I've learned from all of my mistakes. So I'm glad I did them. Right. You know, uh, one that sticks out though was, um, <laughs> we're waiting on it. Well, one that sticks out was, when I had a guy falling down the stairs in one of my videos, um, and it was one of my best performing videos ever out the gate. And then, um, I went to a movie and I was happy. And then when I came out and checked my phone, it had gotten age restricted. Um, but I was glad because I was like, I knew I was pushing the boundaries with putting it in there and stuff. And, um, uh, so I don't know, I don't regret any of my, mistakes i've made on youtube but i've made i have made a few i guess what one are you talking about i was talking about your outsourcing issue oh <laughs> because i think that's important because so just so you know a lot of people especially in the coaching industry yeah outsource their whole fucking life like they don't even run their companies like it's literally outsourced to all over the place and you were an innocent victim <laughs> pretty much in an outsourcing thing of someone trying to be funny and it just could have blown everything apart. 
oh yeah, that probably cost me like a couple thousand bucks and, uh, and almost, you know, potentially my channel. So what happened was he put in a, I hired this guy to edit one of my videos and I had been really possessive about my channel and didn't let anyone work on it. So I had him do a practice video and he did a good job. Um, so I had him do a big video and it was, it was a big video. It was like my best performing video out the gate and it was going to be a million view video. Um, and then I, I'd watched it like three or four times, um, and had edited a few things that I was just like, oh, that's inappropriate. That's not going to fly. And that might get flagged after it's uploaded. Um, but I was watching it back like 12 or 15 hours after it posted and it was performing just like crazy. And uh, I noticed there was like some anime porn <laughs> spliced in for like a couple frames. And I was like, you fucker. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you like gotta I see your whole livelihood. Like it's a, uh, you know, one of those art it's what you know artists do like draw the dick in the background and hope no one notices type of deal like huh i'll put a couple frames in mm -hmm. um anyone could report that and if it got reported enough times like uh that would get your channel taken down completely and so i had to crop it out because you can do that after you upload there's an uh, in-studio video editor but then it threw the audio off and it took like 15 hours to completely adjust. So for like 15 hours, it was, it stayed there and the audio to the entire video was off. So like the comments just flooded with complaints and views dropped. So he probably cost me like 400,000 views and like $2,000 for that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's something I want to point out to people because everybody's just like outsource it. I'm like, ooh, ooh, ooh. that can be dangerous depending upon what you're talking about. Yeah. 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 That was, um, and I was hyper stressed out for that. Entire I remember day. you were, you were not I was fun to be so around. stressed. Yeah. Cause I, you know, any, at any moment I was waiting to get an email saying like, sorry, we uh, had to delete your channel. Yeah. So. What happens if they delete your channel? What's the recourse to get it back? Um, you can, uh, you know, file a claim or whatever. You can dispute it, uh, like two or three times. Um, if you, I've seen some people get their channels deleted and brought back, uh, through like mass Twitter support of all things, like within YouTube, you can't really elicit that kind of support, but on Twitter you can, and you can like, uh, you know, mass tag YouTube and they'll, they'll respond and check it out. And I've seen a lot of channels reinstated because they were wrongly taken down for crap like that. Um, so, you know, if that happened, I could probably have gotten my channel back. Um, uh, just cause I have a big enough network of people on YouTube, uh, uh, and Twitter. So, um, but not everyone has that recourse. So like, that's just that for a lot of people. Um, they'll dispute it, but YouTube just has bots look at that stuff. So <laughs> it'll just get rejected, you know? Fair. Gents, yeah. you guys have any final questions as we prepare for the landing here in the net over the next 15 minutes? Yeah. Um, so you mentioned, I mean, focusing on YouTube, you do a little bit on Twitter, but what made you double down on those? When I think of most people building brands, they think, all right, I have to be on Instagram as well and TikTok and MySpace and Google Plus and Facebook and all whatever MySpace come up with. <laughs> like, but you focused in and, and you really centered on that. Um, why is that not expanded? Um, YouTube was the one I liked the most. Um, I tried TikTok. Uh, I had like a movie sending TikTok. I think it still exists too. Um, but and like, I don't know, I was breaking myself in making the short form ones, I guess, because I was still doing video editing. Um, and I made like three or four short form ones. Um, but the longer form that YouTube allows is a lot more fun. Mm -hmm. And um, I also like once I got monetized and actually looked up like 
like how do influencers make money? Like <laughs> I realized like YouTube is the one that actually pays and can you can have a real career. Um, all the other ones are like as soon as I figured that out and I was like, wait, this is the one I enjoy the most and it actually pays. Okay, I'm going all in on this. Um, and yeah, like there's uh, kind of a way of looking at it like a thousand TikTok followers is worth like one YouTube subscriber. Like it's just such a different world. Hmm. And um, you have to get just an unbelievable amount of views on like a TikTok video to even, you know, make any money. I think I like YouTube has shorts or whatever, which is basically TikTok. And there's, I saw this video recently and it just reaffirmed my stance on short form content. So that means no Instagram for me, no, any of that. It's not worth my time. Um, is like, I think he got like 250 million views on this one short. And it was like the most viewed short ever. And he made like $2,000. <laughs> <laughs> <Fuck. laughs> like, like that's, unreal like my review of blue beetle i made more money in that like you know <laughs> so oh wow my yeah. heart breaks room just hearing that yeah yeah and scoob you got anything uh well i mean i'm just curious i guess do you do or would you do ever not i'm not this isn't for me <laughs> uh yeah, would you sure would you would you teach someone to do what you do, obviously for a fee? Ooh, if someone yeah. out there wants, huh? yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> cool. We had to talk list? about this before the show. Yeah. I said, bro, you got to be a consultant if you're going to do this podcast. Got to yeah. pull yourself out. Yeah, for sure. Cool. I will say this. When he met with me and my team, there were so many, and I, would, I was going to bring this up. Like if you were to start a YouTube channel, already had one. You have your iconography, wow. your titles that were the biggest things that I never even thought about with YouTube. And Matt pointed those out to me that those were the biggest things that really decided if people maybe would go your route or not. Would you like to break those down a little bit, Matt, since he was asking about that? Like what you like, how you would basically, you know, if you're consulting someone like where you'd start and why you would start there, kind of like you did with me and my team. Yeah, well, you guys were you know, that's, you would be the ideal kind of client if I, you know, if I were to do consulting or anything, um, because, uh, it's kind of like a, uh, oh, I don't know, like a singer or some, um, um, the, someone who gives voice lessons and like, they don't want to teach someone who can't sing already. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's not that barrier of entry, I guess, when it comes to YouTube, but like at the very least, like have an idea of what you want to do. Um, like, you know, just saying, uh, I just, I want to be a YouTuber isn't going to cut it because that's way too much work. But at, at the very least, like have an idea of what you want to do and, um, uh, you know, some channels that influence you um, or that you're interested in. Uh, even if you don't want to, you know, like necessarily emulate that channel or, or anything like that, but like just something of a starting point, like what are you interested in so that I can have something to work with, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, Jay, did that answer that pretty good? Or were you like, well, yeah. follow up there? Yeah, no, I mean, I was just curious if he did, because, you know, there might be people out there that, you know, listening, you know, even in the fitness space that want to want to help. All right, I'm gonna ask my last question, so you each got time to ask your last two. We'll end it. We'll end it with Robo. So Scoob, you'll go out for me. So think of something wise, Matt. How the fuck do you scale a YouTube channel and make it really, really successful? You can make a lot of money. In the day and age where scaling is everything, how do you actually do it with this platform? Uh, consistency and. <sighs> I don't know. I feel like it's an old fashioned suggestion is just put in a lot of hard work. Uh, <laughs> um, and for me, that meant like I was working a full time job and then coming home and just working YouTube full time. And I wasn't even monetized, you know, because I just wanted it. So I just 
um, I just worked my ass off to figure out what made it work. And like, um, I was able, it's one thing to hear the advice and it's another thing to actually understand like how to repurpose it for yourself. But, um, I feel like the kind of suggestions I give is not the kind that you hear when it comes to, you know, YouTube creator channels that you'll find on YouTube, like how to be successful on YouTube. Like a lot of my suggestions go against a lot of that. And I think that just bypasses it because it's just like, it it's simpler than you think it is in my opinion. Yeah, that's a theme that, you know, Jason, I know Robo, myself, the abold, we've all pretty much when we were building our coaching brands, we're doing things full time on top of this to be able to really like lurch out there and get it. I mean, in a day and age where you hear like, just buy some Bitcoin and you should fly up and you'll be a millionaire overnight and all this other shit yeah. you hear. It, it's very refreshing when someone comes along and say, no, I actually like I, I worked a lot of damn hours. And I had to like really put my ass into the seat to make it happen. So uh, I appreciate that honest answer because, you know, to my kids who love YouTube, they swear that you only spend five minutes doing it. I'm like, you guys don't know shit. You know, like me. Shit. <laughs> no. Um, but I appreciate that answer. Scoob. Yes, sir. Your last one. What do you got? You better make it good, man. <laughs> no pressure. Um, shit. I'm kind of tapped out. I, I, I asked all my financial questions. Um, I guess. You know, what's your, okay, so you're, you know, in the entrepreneurial field, I know for me, um, I always kind of have that feel that it could crash any time. We've talked about that on, on various podcasts. And so number one, how do you deal with that? Number two, how do you, I guess, scale this, um, to keep growing? Um, and then number three, how do you know how many to put out? I mean, if I'm getting paid per video, I, I'm probably cranking out three a week, but then are you saturating? Like, why aren't there more videos? Like, how do you balance all that? Mm, good questions. Um, yeah. So, well, first of all, I, I think one a week is, uh, optimal okay. and that's, that's just for me. Some people can crank them out every day, but in my opinion, and this goes against a lot of typical advice is um, it is quality over quantity. In my opinion, if you can put out three quality videos a week, do it. That's amazing. And it's like more power to you. Uh, for me, uh, optimal is probably three a month. Uh, but it's, you know, I try for four a month and some videos I'm not as happy as I am with others. Um, but I strive to make the best video I possibly can. And I think that's um, something that escapes a lot of people when it comes to doing YouTube. So, um, you know, put out, just put out quality videos. Don't worry about uh, how many you're putting out because like, uh, for example, there's this one video that I knew was going to go viral and um, I engineered it to be viral and it, it took me a lot of work to do it um, and a lot of planning, but uh you know, that's, that one video is worth more than me putting out, you know, three or four lower quality videos that are going to get, you know, a quarter of the views, but they took a little less work at least. Um, I'd rather just put out the one big video and I can put like a big sponsor in that video too, because I know it's going to get a lot of views. So, you know, just optimize how much money I can make out of it too. Um, so, yeah. All right, Robo, I guess I go. Well, there was actually another part. What was your third? Oh, yeah. What was the other part? Well, I mean, you know, I, I guess the easier way to say it is, you know, if you had months where it didn't quite go your way and you're thinking, oh, shit, or have you been scaling completely up? And then how do you keep scaling up? I mean, is there a ceiling of what you feel you can make or do you feel sky's the limit? Those types of things. Yeah, I think about that a lot. I'm, I'm always like, okay. <laughs> Well, let's plan for the worst and work for the best. 
Um, you know, I'm trying to think five years ahead and where, where I'm going to be. And that means evolving the channel. And that means like not stay, staying stagnant at all. So I'm always, I'm already trying to think of how I'm going to make my videos better. Uh, I'm working on actually, uh, finding a full-time video editor that's going to like, my videos aren't going to be the same anymore. They're going to be, uh, the production value is going to go up. Uh, I'm buying, I'm actually going to be integrating myself into the videos more um, because I want it to be a brand. I want you to recognize me, which means I'll probably have to go back to blue hair too, because that is the brand. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, I need to scale up. I need to get better at what I do. And if I get better at what I do, um, then, you know, it, growth will happen. Uh, so, and I'm also going to use it as a platform too, to relaunch my comic book. Um, I'm rewriting it and it's given me a talent pool too of people to actually work with. And, uh, I'll own the book now and I've developed my own platform of viewers and people, my own audience. Um, and, uh, there's already a template in place too of uh last year another person in my niche launched launched their own comic book universe and made it it was an instant multi-million dollar uh business and he just had his second multi-million dollar campaign too and uh i won't be able to reach that heights off the bat but um you know anything in a you know six-figure ballpark is amazing and it's insight too and um you know so just making it like you know, the movie cynic YouTube channel, like a recognizable brand. And, uh, you know, that'll be on the comic book too. And, uh, yeah. So to answer your questions, absolutely. I think about it all the time. And I also think about how I'm going to avoid it. Yep. For every day. Yep. <laughs> I think, uh, you have to, uh, as an entrepreneur and someone that's relying on yourself solely to, uh, make your income if you don't think that way uh you're probably not going to make it very long yeah i feel like being scared i'm like not scared of being scared anymore i always like i use it as fuel now so yeah that's the best kind of fuel there is <laughs> yeah fear <laughs> well none of us want to go back to corporate world i would not exist i'd be fired within an hour so um yeah that's, that's the reality robo take us home so Matt, I'm going to make an assumption having met you in person that you're also not from the bodybuilding space like myself. <laughs> I am get not. offended by that. Uh, <laughs> I am not, sir. But no. when you see health and fitness videos, I know when I watch them a lot, a lot of our audience is in that space. There's a lot of things that turn me off. There's a lot of things that interest me. But what, you know, when you've seen those being from outside the space, what do you find valuable what do you think is just garbage and you immediately switch off that channel? Um, I like people being open and inviting um, because yeah, I've watched a lot of, uh, you know, health and fitness YouTube channels and um, you know, like to pick a subject, like working out like a at home forearm workout or at whatever. Um, I, I want it to be really inviting and I want it to be easily digestible information. Um, I don't want to feel like anyone's like holier than thou. I want them to just feel like they're on my level and um, give me really quick. I mean, that's a through line for anything on YouTube. Like just get to the point, give me the information that you promised me um, and make it so I can understand it and uh, you know, make it simple. Uh, as simple as it possibly can be depending on the mm -hmm. subject but yeah like that's the kind of thing I'm looking for um, because I am not an expert um, but I'm also not a dummy so please don't treat me like one but also like um, like I'm here for a short time I'm on a YouTube video so just uh, try and make it as simple as possible for me uh, so I can get as much information in as short a period of time as possible. That's some damn good advice to finish that up, man. Yeah. Matt, where can everybody reach out to you, hit you up for consulting, all that good stuff? Because I think that, you know, I told you that I thought YouTube was going to be a great future for the health and fitness space, especially mm -hmm. as Instagram has kind of like really made their algorithms so much similar like TikTok. That I'm just like, oh, 
don't want nothing to do with it. But uh, where can people find you at? Where can people follow you at besides the movie Cynic, anything like that? Let them know. Uh, yeah, you can reach me if you're interested in consulting. Uh, MovieCynicYT at gmail.com. Um, on YouTube at the Movie Cynic, and uh, you can also reach me on Twitter. Uh, you can DM me if you need to at uh, Movie Cynic YT on Twitter or X as it is now. Got, it's X, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's X, guys. It's X. Well, we appreciate you ta- taking the time to join us. We have never, I know Jason and I have never had a topic like this we've discussed, and I think that uh, you brought a lot of insight to it. and Hopefully we can get you on our panel to do like a presentation on all the good stuff with YouTube and how to really monetize it at a deeper level than just what we did today, man. Yeah, that would be awesome. Cool. Well, guys, this is another one. We'll catch you all next week. Peace. All right. See ya.